you can go ahead and make a certificate authority on your Windows 10, 11, whatever machine using OpenSSL. And the core OpenSSL commands and concepts are the same as that you find on Linux. However, the installation and the path conventions will differ. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get it done step by step on a Windows 11 machine. Now, OpenSSL does not come pre-installed in the Windows machine, so you'll need to download it. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it's done. So the first thing you need to do is go to this website, Shining Light Productions. This URL I'm gonna place in the description. Once you're on this website, go ahead and scroll down, and this is the option you get right here. Let me just zoom in a little bit, yes. So you go ahead and click on this exe. You go ahead and download the exe file. Once it's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and install it. So let me just go ahead and click on it. Uh, perfect. It is downloading right now. All right, so you go ahead and run the downloaded file, the executable. You'll have to accept the agreement, otherwise it's not gonna let you proceed. You click on next, select the folder, select next, here you have the option of selecting the Windows System Directory or the OpenSSL Binaries Directory. Now, whatever you select, you need to go ahead and make, well, you should go ahead and uh, update the path variable so that you can easily access the OpenSSL from the command line, right? So I'm gonna go with the uh, Windows System Directory, say next. Now I've already done it. Once, but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and say install. Perfect, okay, click on finish. All right, so as mentioned previously that adding the OpenSSL bin directory to your system's path environment variable is crucial. Now, why is that crucial? Because then you can just go ahead and run the OpenSSL commands from any directory in the command prompt. So basically you'll get easy command line access to OpenSSL. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. But first, let's see how we can update the environment variables. So you, what you need to do is you need to go to system properties and under there, go ahead and select advanced. And towards the bottom, you'll see this option for environment variables. Go ahead and click on environment variables. And in here, you need to come down to system variables and then go ahead and select path. Once you select path, Go ahead and click on edit. So I select path, go ahead and click on edit. You find that I've already added the OpenSSL bin directory to the path variable, right? All you need to do is go ahead and click on new and then add the path. And that's it, go ahead and click on okay, okay, okay. So let me just show it to you. For example, I just copied the path for the bin directory wherever I've installed OpenSSL. I say new and then paste the path right here. That's it. Go ahead and click on OK, 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 and done, right? I've already done it, so I don't need to add it again. So say OK, OK, and OK. Now, I should be able to run the OpenSSL command right from this directory. I don't really need to go to the bin directory to do it because I've updated the path variable. So if I run the OpenSSL version command, we should be good. I hit enter and it tells me, hey, Yes, you have OpenSSL, this is the version, blah, 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 right? So this tells me that the installation was successful and that the path variable was successfully updated as well. So now we're gonna take a look at the commands. We need to make our own certificate authority. So we're gonna start by creating a dedicated directory for our certificate authority. I'm gonna keep it in the C, so I'm gonna say make directory and the C drive, and let's call it, my C A E N V. Hit enter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cd into my C A D N V. Hit enter. All right. So let me go ahead and create a few subdirectories. So I'm going to say M K D I R. I'm going to say search. I'm going to say C R L. Uh, new search. And then I also going to have private and then request. So let me tell you why I did what I just did. Okay, so we're gonna store the issued certificates in the search directory. The CRL will be used for certificate uh, revocation lists. 
it's going to store that information and then we have a new search directory which is going to store the newly generated certificates and the private directory we're going to use to store private keys this one's going to be highly sensitive and therefore we're going to go ahead and hide this one i'm going to show you how to do that and then you got the requests directory which we're going to use to store the certificate signing requests the csrs so let's go ahead and hide the private directory. So I'm going to say ATPRIB as in the, the attribute plus H and then private, which is the private directory. I hit enter. That's it. It's done. And apart from this, we're going to create a couple files. I'm going to say echo and then we're going to say index.txt. And then we're also going to go ahead and do echo 1000. And then this one is going to be serial, right? So what are these two? With the index.txt, this is going to be a database for issued certificates. And the serial, it's going to go ahead and store the next serial number for certificates. Now we need to go ahead and create the OpenSSL configuration file, the OpenSSL.cnf file. It defines how OpenSSL behaves. And we're going to keep it in the same directory as my, at, and we. My C A T N V. Okay, so I'm in the My C A T N V directory. I'm going to say new and then go ahead and say text document. I'm going to call it open SSL dot CNF. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. So I'm going to call it open SSL dot CNF. Go ahead and enter. It's going to say blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say yes, no problem. So I'm going to go ahead and paste the content that we need to place in this .cnf file, this configuration file. Um, I'm going to share this uh, file on my Telegram group. So you can go ahead and find the file there. Um, I'm going to place a link in the description uh, for my Telegram group. So feel free to download the file from there. All right, and that's it. I say Control S to save it, just to make sure we proceed. Sometimes what happens is you'll find that there are spaces between subject key identifier. Make sure that there are no spaces. Authority key identifier, no spaces. No spaces here as well for subject key identifier, authority key identifier as well. And the same applies to this section as well. Make sure that there are no spaces so that you don't face any issues. Another change that you need to make in the OpenSSL config file is on line number 11. You need to make sure that for a certificate, the value is this. That, that is the name of your CA certificate, the self-signed certificate. For me, this is the name I kept while creating that certificate. So you need to make sure that this name is correctly mentioned in here as per the name that you chose for your self-signed CA certificate, right? So yes, that should be sufficient. Now we're going to go ahead and generate the CA private key. And this is the command you're going to use. So go ahead and run this command and hit enter. Once it's done, it's going to ask you to enter the PEM passphrase. Go ahead and give it a passphrase. So I'm going to give it... Uh, mm, mm, uh, mm. And then verify and hit enter. That's it. It is done. So make sure that you remember this passphrase because when you go ahead and sign the certificate, this passphrase is going to be used that time. So make sure you make a note of it and you remember it correctly. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and generate the self signed CA certificate. This is the command you need to execute. Now here again, you can go ahead and mention whatever name you want um, for the self-signed CA certificate. I've mentioned the network Viking. It's arbitrary, so not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter the passphrase. What is the passphrase? You remember it? So uh, am, I guess I, I remember it. The country, I'm going to say India. State, Kashmir. Uh, Srinagar, I'm okay with that organization name i'm going to say the network viking hit enter okay i'm going to say tac mm, common name uh, your name or your server's host name right all right so here i'm going to say son at 
the network viking.com hit enter and i'm going to say isan at the network viking.com hit enter that's it it is done all right so both the things are done now we got our private key which is the ca dot key and we got the self-signed certificate as well which is the network viking.crt now we're going to go ahead and issue the certificates for the servers or clients. Now in this case, I'm going to go with the client and this is the command I'm going to execute. Now this command will go ahead and create a private key for this uh, client. I want to say enter. That's it. So I just created the private key for the client. So I'm going to go ahead and create a CSR for this client now. I'm going to go ahead and run this command. And here, in here I mentioned pnv.key that I used in the previous command. And this one will be called pnv.csr, the certificate signing request. And that's it. I go ahead and hit enter. Oh, so the country name is going to be India. I'm okay with Kashmir, Srinagar. Company name, I'm going to say Cisco. Oh, maybe I'm going to say the network, Viking, hit enter. Let's say TAC. Okay with that. Common name, I'm going to say PNV. And PNV at the domain name and hit enter um, again. I'm say the hit enter and we are good. Okay, we're done with all the steps. So we've created the CA, the CA self signed certificate, we've created the CSR. And now, as the final step, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sign the CSR that we created in the previous step, right? So, how do we sign the CSR with our own certificate authority? This is the command we're going to use. Now, in this particular command, we're using tnv.csr as the input. And this is the CSR that we created in the previous com in the previous command, and uh, the output is going to be tnv.crt. Another interesting thing in this particular command is the policy that we're using. Uh, the policy I've mentioned here is policy loose. You can have a loose policy or a strict policy. So basically, when you have a strict policy, it enforces that some fields in the CSR must match the CA's certificate, and I don't want that. That's why I'm using a uh, policy loose. Right. So if I go ahead and run this command now, anyways, I'm going to get an error. And why is that? I'm going to tell you why. So I mentioned the password. And I hit enter. It says problem with the index file. Index.txt could not load slash parse the file. Now, if I show you the index file, I'll show you what the problem is. All right, so this is the index file. Now, in the index file, you need to make sure that you do not have two lines right here. Just make sure that you delete this one right here. And that's it, right? You don't have anything in there. Once you don't have anything in there, you're good. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, right? So I've saved it. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and try to run the same command again. I hit enter. And I say my password. Hit enter. And we are good. Sign the certificate. Yes. One out of one certificate request. Certified commit. Yes. Hit enter. Uh, database with one entry. Database updated. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at uh, the, uh, uh, the folder in which the dedicated folder. For your CA, you'll find the differences, the files in there, other stuff. Fetch the file from there, from the folder that I'd mentioned, and then just go ahead and you know install that certificate in the client for which you signed. You know, basically created the CSR and signed it. So I think we should be good. If you are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions or you know any any uh, problems that you're facing while doing this please get in touch with me i'll be very happy to help and uh, please do join uh, the telegram group i'm going to go ahead and share the file there as i mentioned previously and follow me on linkedin and yeah pleasure you have a great time ahead goodbye